there is a risk. The risk here is that the result of an enterprise depends on external factors. So being you an investor, so basically being you a person that is uh, raising money to give uh, to your uh, subscriber a return, how you can avoid those risks? Well, I think um, you got to work with those risks. Um, so, uh, you know, for instance, um, the, the signals in the last year or two have been pretty clear. The country wants to direct more capital, direct capital away from what we've been investing, which is these consumer-based internet platform companies, and redirect them to more hard technologies, uh, higher value technologies, for instance, semiconductor, life sciences, uh, smart manufacturing, supply uh, chain management, optimization software. Um, they don't want us to burn a lot of money to create these internet monopolies anymore. Okay. So we're going to do that. <laughs> in my business in the last year or two, and, and certainly in the next five years, I don't think I or other venture capitalists are going to be investing to build another DD. That's not going to happen because signals is clear. And, and, and so we're, we're looking for different types of entrepreneurial startups to, to back. Uh, we want to create more Huawei's. Okay, we want to create more uh, in English dice. Okay, uh, those type of companies. In the last 20, 30 years, especially in the manufacturing sector, in, in the real economy, the government played a critical role in capital formation. I became a venture capitalist early in the late 1990s and early 2000s. So before the internet stage, I was investing in manufacturing companies, early stage private uh, town and village enterprises. Now, all those companies, private companies, were, were formed when, and, and given the resources by the government to start. And, and, and uh, they were given land, uh, they were given tax policies, they, they built schools around it, uh, they gave tax breaks to your suppliers so they can move closer to you, um, all of these things. Um, so, so the government played an enormous role in the growth of the private sector uh, in the last 20, 30 years. Um, and, and they're gonna keep doing it, um, but they are, their priorities change, right, from manufacturing to internet, now to, to hard, hard technologies. So as a private investor, what you want to do is you make sure that you sense those directions and you work with that. So basically, uh, the real, uh, one of the things that we know, uh, we have to understand when we do business in China, within this framework is we need to be able to get the message. Exactly. When you hear common prosperity, why are you surprised that the, all the private English schools get shut down? It is obvious it's going to happen. Let me tell you those who don't know. He used to come to the meetings when we were younger with the five-year plan. <laughs> and say, you need to read it. <laughs> this is exactly what you need to do. Read it. It's written there, 150 pages in Chinese. Get Google Translate or some lawyers to translate it for you. I've been a believer of that, that that I think in this country, the mandatory education, nine-year mandatory education, should be equal and public and free for all. Uh, I don't want to see a country where the rich can send their children to better schools and it's because they can pay for it. But we, we come from Italy, yeah. no common prosperity, but we have a very good exactly. public school system. Right. Exactly. So, so we want that. We, we want the investments to go into public education, at least in the mandatory education period. It's, okay. but, but in a country like Italy, we don't have by policy, we have by culture. It's an achievement that has been reached over the years. So I, I think that uh, uh, there is always a mutual adjustment. Yeah. Sometime I get the feeling that uh, forcing is because is there is not the possibility to achieve this naturally. But let me go back again to the point of as uh, an investor. So basically, suppose that uh, uh, you are opening a new fund, and you are looking for a subscriber, and the subscriber come to you and say, OK, I have a million dollars, uh, which will be the expected return in the next seven, five, seven years, or whatever. This is well, my wire instructions. Please, wise, send it, please send it tomorrow. <laughs> please send it to you. Now. So basically, uh, the answer would be we need to trust 
the growth will be there, uh, but so it's by definition, it's not by, is this? Well, I mean, like I said, I think that the next 20 years will be golden era for the Chinese economy uh, because we are, we're entering a new phase of growth. It's a different kind of growth. It's much higher quality, higher profit, higher margin growth, higher value. And we're going to have a, a large, a middle class being enlarged. I mean, that's what happened in the U.S. post-World War II. Uh, middle class became very big uh, as opposed to the first half of the 20th century. Um, and, and when you have a really big and growing middle class, that's when return on investment becomes superior and sustainable. You know, if you're in those developing countries uh, where only a few people spend a lot of money and the rest, are, uh, it, it, it's not sustainable. You also explained that for some, something else is to move production from quantity to quality, no. right? Which again, is something very good. But at the end, is this going towards the common prosperity? In other words, uh, are we not going to have at the end the same result? We move from quantity to go to quality. Well, uh, there's certainly part of that's part of it. Uh, but on the uh, on the economic decisions, commercial and investment decisions, I think what we want are we want to build businesses that are well, the the platform internet platform companies. Uh, they are prone to winner-take-all types of practices. So, so when you become a platform, you're really a monopoly, and which then all of the fruits of these innovations go to the very few that, that own these companies uh, instead of spread, right? That's number one. And number two is uh, 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 our manufacturing economy, although it's improved a lot, still not high-end enough, okay? We want to be like the Germans, okay? <laughs> So, 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 so when we have higher margin production, then there's more profits to be shared across the society. Uh, so that's where the government wants to redirect capital, risk capital in that direction, instead of investing either in low-end manufacturing or investing in those kind of platform plays where a few people get very, very rich uh, and, and control the society. They want to redirect risk capital towards semiconductor, towards life sciences, towards smart manufacturing, EVs, so we can get ahead of the, uh, the, the Germans and, and automobile industry, they want that. Yeah, that, that is and very clear. and, and that, that, those will be higher margin, high employment and higher margin uh, uh, businesses. And when you have margins, you can spread it.